Good morning, everyone. Um, my presentation today is about discovering patient preferences for tiered informed consent. We did a preliminary survey. Um, my mentor for this project was Adela Grando. Uh, first, I'll give you an introduction to I Concur, and I'll describe the research study that I developed, show you some of the taxonomy choices that were used in the research study, and also discuss the evaluation. Um, I've, I'll go over my results thus far and describe the future directions of this project. So our study was using iConcur, which is an online tool that was developed by iDash. And it, this tool allows patients to make personal choices about whether they want to share their medical records for research. Some of the options that we gave them include demographics, sensitive information, and non-sensitive information. And there's also some options for sharing uh, your medical rec records with specific types of researchers or allowing for certain types of sponsorship for the research studies. And I'll describe these a little bit more later. So in order to evaluate this tool, I recruited 40 participants this summer on campus, um, all of my participants were at least 18 years old and spoke English. Uh, however, my age and racial distributions of my participants reflect the campus student population, as to be expected. Um, most of my participants were 18 to 30 years old and of Asian or Caucasian background. So this is a screenshot of the I Concur tool, when a participant signs into the tool and finishes reading the introduction, they're brought to this screen where they are given um, all these different categories of information that they can choose to share or not share with researchers. And uh, as you can see, this particular participant has chosen to share all of their medical record information. Um, this is another screenshot that allows it uh, shows where participants can choose what types of sponsorship they would like their medical record information to be used in research studies. Um, we integrated some educational things, such as the question marks that are clickable and these open descriptions that the participants can read to get more information about what exactly is in that category. And so this participant has chosen to not share their information with commercially sponsored research. After they completed their choices, they followed up with an evaluation survey. Um, our survey had two goals. Um, we wanted to understand whether participants actually stood, understood the idea of sharing their medical information and if they understood how to use our online tool. And we also wanted to discover whether they want more options available in the sharing taxonomies. So our evaluation survey contained 28 questions, and the entire process took participants 40 to 50 minutes to complete. Our, our evaluation also included three questions that were specifically designed to measure comprehension to see whether participants actually read the material that we included. And we had an overall score of 90%, which shows that people are paying pretty close attention to the material that was given to them. In the beginning of our survey, we collect some demographics information. Um, these are the categories of demographics that we asked participants to respond to. And we had a pretty interesting distribution of annual household income. Everything from less than $5,000 a year to more than $100,000 a year. And now I'll go over a few of our more interesting responses that we've received on some of the survey questions. And this first question, we asked participants if there was anything else that they would like to be able to keep private in their medical record, in addition to the choices that they were offered in the taxonomy. Um, uh, there were a fair number of participants that wanted sensitive non-diagnostic information as an option to keep private. So this would include stuff like medications or surgical history that relate to sensitive categories of information, which could be sexual health or mental health. 
For the second question, we asked them whether they want to control the sharing of biosamples, which include tissue, blood, and urine samples. Uh, the large majority of participants were either eager to have this or indifferent towards it. Only a few, uh, only 20% said no, they wouldn't want this as an option for them personally. And for this third question, we asked them whether they feel more or less willing to share their own medical information now that these choices were given to them. Uh, the vast majority said more, um, and the majority of the other responses also were positive, but they wanted to include a description of why they said more, so there were some written comments. Um, this was interesting to us because our study, um, our study introduction gave a background of how medical records can help research, but also with the risks that were associated with sharing your medical records. So we clearly outlined both the benefits and risks of participating, and even after reading all of this information, uh, participants were more willing to share their medical history. And for these two questions, uh, in the small donut graph, we asked them, if it were possible for you to know who is accessing your data, would you like to know this? And most participants said yes. And we followed that up with, what would you like to know about these researchers who used your data? And um, since, as you can see, since I only had 40 participants, um, most of my participants wanted to know at least one thing about the researchers who were using their data, including um, the aims of the research, the organizations that the researcher belonged to, the outcomes of the research, and even wanted to know uh, what papers were published using the medical data. Uh, so these results are from the taxonomy that I showed the screenshots of earlier. Uh, these were the results of the patient's personal choices about whether they wanted to share their information. Uh, so 22% of my participants did not want to share their medical history with commercially sponsored researchers. And 10% wanted their medical information shared with only UCSC-based researchers and not researchers from other institutions. And 25% um, did not want to share at least one category of, of sensitive information. And by far the most common was genetic information, although there were a few who also did not want to share sexual and reproductive health. So we've had some promising results with this study thus far, and a lot of positive feedback from the participants indicates that the subjects both enjoy and want control over their medical records and we currently have a new user, user interface in development. There'll be a 200 patient study next spring, and this study will link this online tool to their actual medical records so that participants will know exactly what in their own medical history is being included, and it will also give them feedback and information about the researchers who do access their data for research purposes. Um, I included a quick screenshot of our new user interface development that's in development. Uh, it kind of simplifies the taxonomy into one page for participants. And so these are my acknowledgments. Um, my mentor, Adala Grando, uh, Dr. Ona Machado, Mona Wong, our software developer, uh, IDASH, DBMI, and of course, NIH for funding.